Ladies and gentlemen, if you have put your hands on a turntable, if you have rapped along with a hip hop record, if you have participated in any way in the last 50 years with hip hop culture, I think you owe just a little bit of a gratitude to the man we got coming on stage next. Please make some noise. The godfather of hip hop, creator of the quick mix theory, Grandmaster Flash. Damn, I walked around a little bit. I seen crowds here and there. It looks like the whole. Okay. Wow. I come from the project. Twenty-seven thirty Dewey Avenue, Bronx, New York. The Ross Neck Projects in the Bronx. I can remember as a kid listening to music. In the Sadler residence, you would hear anything from pop, rock, jazz, blues, funk, disco, R&B, alternative, Caribbean, Latin. I come from a time where music had no charts. I come from a time where the dopest record could have came from a, a black band or a white band or foreign band or American band. Being one of the youngest in my family, I wasn't allowed to touch the stereo, but depending on which sister was on the stereo, what day, or whether it was mom and dad, that was my inspiration. My dad was a collector of vinyl, and my mom was a seamstress. So I got to learn two things very early in age. The importance of vinyl, getting my ass kicked every time my father would say, stop touching my records. And I got to understand the importance of a needle and material because my mom was a seamstress. In my teenage years, listening to music, I would notice when the song would play the intro and then uh, they go into, it goes into the verse. Then when it came time for the drummer to play, that particular part was always unjustifiably too short. So I must tell you, I came up with this science and math called the quick mix theory out of anger. I was, why does the drummer solo so short? I took my teenage years to not go outside and play, not go to the basketball court, not go chasing chicks, just figuring out why. And doing this in the park, it was pretty difficult to get people to understand what it was that I was doing. Why did I mark the record with a crayon? Why did I put my fingertips on vinyl? Why did I do that? But here we are 50 years later, and the producers took my hand to vinyl technique and put it into a sampler, and they gave birth to a record business. This thing that I did with, this, with, this, with, with duplicate copies of the record became the music bed for human beings to speak on. Today they call it rap and I am the inventor. <laughs> Within the, the Quick Mix Theory, I came up with a material because my mom was a seamstress. Felt. When you first get a turntable that has this ugly rubber mat 
piece, this disgusting rubber. So my biggest issue was the platter could not go clockwise smoothly. So remembering that I touched polyester, rayon, silk. I ran to a material store and I cut out two pieces of felt that was the size of this. And when my mom wasn't looking, I spray starch the felt. I called it a wafer. Today it's called a slip mat. When my grades was good, mom would make these chocolate chip cookies with this wax paper. So with the combination of the two, because the key thing was the platter had to spin clockwise with no friction because I wanted to go counterclockwise or back and forth. Today, here we are. 50 years later, the DJ now plays the turntable like an instrument. I'm gonna play a couple of old jams here, just do a little cut, a little this and that. I'm gonna play some of the songs some of them you might know that were inserted into songs today. Maybe not. Nice and easy. Sometimes the break came from a white band, a black band, a foreign band, an American band. Where I come from, 70s music had no color, no color. For the life of me, I don't understand why do they make charts. Stupid. Yeah. 
Y'all still with me? Somebody put your hands in the air. Rock with me. Yeah, Aretha was hip hop too. Somebody turning me down? Where's a turn down man? Song. Well, we had to search Lionel Richie and the Commodores. Could you believe it? When we went shopping for records, we checked everything. Bought the record home, listened to every cut until we found the drum break. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. I need to hear myself. My partner Rip is one of his favorite records. <laughs> I just wanna do my thing. I just wanna do my thing. I can remember going in record stores, Salvation Army, going to people's houses, asking the mom, you got any records in the closet that you don't want? I will come back with a shopping cart and come get them. A lot of these records here came from people's houses. Somebody put a hand in the air if you're enjoying yourself. If you're enjoying yourself.
Chris the Glove Tail is in here. You remember these songs, Chris? Yeah. Shout out to Chris. The Glove Tail. You see, you remember these things right here. Such a search. I can remember getting up early in the morning, nine o'clock in the morning, being in the street till nine o'clock at night. How many people in the building remember the song? Put your hand in the air if you know what it is. They called it pop, we called it hip hop. Studios, no beatboxes, just two pieces of vinyl. We found the break on pop, rock, jazz, blues, funk, disco, R&B, alternative, white music, black music, foreign music, American music, it didn't matter. And at this time, the rapper wasn't born yet. Records came from record companies that only pressed up one artist. Couldn't afford the marketing. One man's trash is another one's treasure. Soundtracks too. We searched and 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 we searched. If they had a drum break, it was hip hop.
go a little deeper. Mmm. Yep. Yep. I gotta tell you, this record here was done by a cover band, right? The original version of this song is absolutely disgusting. And the people who became this group, they were like doing a session. Some of the percussionists was King Erickson, the drummer from the Beatles. They were experts that did a remake of this song. It's called Apache. Somebody put a hand in the air if you feel me. Somebody put a hand in it if you're feeling me. Apache, jump on it. Nah, that's some bullshit right there. <laughs> Shout out to Cool Herc for this one here. here made someone a very rich man. I'm gonna let it play. You tell me if you, if you know what this is. Real big boy in the hip hop game. Raise your hand, I don't know who I'm talking about. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. We searched high and low for the break. We didn't care about the, the verse or the chorus. We wanted that part where that drummer got a couple of seconds just to get, just to shine. And that particular part became the music bed that I strung along so the human beings would have a beat to speak on. That's how that record was constructed. My name is Grandmaster Flash. Thank you. Make some noise for the Godfather. 
of hip hop, Grandmaster Flash. No. Yeah. So as a kid, guys, never in my wildest dreams that I would think putting my fingertips on a vinyl, putting crayon marks so that I could find the break in dark places. Never in my wildest dreams that I would think if I could string together drummers, white drummers, black drummers, foreign drummers, American drummers, pop, rock, jazz, blues, funk, if I could just string all these drummers together. What I did was I took a microphone and I put it on the side of the table on the other side of the table in the Bronx in the 70s, and I said, if anybody can say some shit to this, do it. And it were hundreds of people, most of them were whack, <laughs> until I met one. His name was Keith Wiggins, his name was Cowboy. He is the father of the rappers, I am the father of the music. Thank you. Who did this guy right here? Look at that. First off, congratulations. It's a, it's a big year. You played a, a monumental part in all of this, so can we just get, it's like a happy, the greatest happy birthday ever. The culture, the undeniably the culture that changed the world the most, and you had an instrumental hand in that, so thank you so much. I want to make sure we got a lot of DJs in the crowd. We have a lot of, yeah, where's our DJs at right now? Love that. Okay, so I want to make sure everyone that isn't a DJ and maybe some of the other DJs know where we're at. Would you mind, quick mix theory, would you mind walking us through exactly what that means so we're all on the same page here? First of all, I'm gonna walk you guys through something that I think is very important. When I invented the quick mix theory, the key thing to the mixer was it had to be small and very simple to operate. Then it was this word in the streets. There was this rumbling in the streets. There's this mixer called an S11. I make a call to Lars and company, and I say, send this mixer to me. Because I made the rules. The box comes three weeks later. I open it up. I stare at it, it stares at me. <laughs> it breaks all the rules of what I invented. I don't plug it in for a couple of days, I walk by it and I stare at it, it <laughs> stares at me. I get the word, there's a guru and their full name, O.P. I get in contact with O.P. O.P. comes to me. And I say, explain this piece to me. Where's the cue? Right there. What does it do? You can play drops. It has delay. It has all these things. I'm, and I can remember coming back, and, and, and back in the days, y'all, I had like five machines around me and I had to go like that. But this piece had it all in one box. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> I finally plugged the mixer in. And it doesn't turn on immediately. This shit turns on like a jet. Poof. It has all these buttons. 
I'm looking at it, it's looking at me. <laughs> OP tells me how it works, and I've only had it three months, and I must tell you, this mixer is an absolute game changer. And the reason why, and I'm a scientist, and the reason why I say that is because all the things that we want in one unit has never been made. I'm still trying to tame this beast. I don't know it, know it, know it, know it. But this mixer is quite incredible. Let's go on to the turntable. I am a diva when it comes to the turntable. I don't care how much the promoter wants to pay me. On the contract, it says I must have the battleship gray turntables. It's the only thing I'll play on. And if you don't have them, I'm not showing. There was a time in London, England, and they said we can't find those turntables. I'm getting ready to head for the airport. They said, but we, we have something else. I'm pissed off, but then I says, I'll come to the festival where the area is, bring them backstage. And there's two important factors that qualifies for me for a turntable. In the state of inertia, how long does it take to get up to speed? Instant. The gray boys didn't do that. Secondly, while applying my fingertips on the vinyl, does the strobe stay as steady as possible? And when you let it go, how does the record pick up? Impeccable. This Pioneer PLX-1000, it is just my opinion, is probably the dopest turntable on the planet. And I say this is because there are those DJs that play songs that are the same tempo all the time, all the time. Hell no, I can't do that. I got to make Queen with James Brown and James Brown with Led Zeppelin. So the pitching on this is incredible because I'm a strong believer in everybody has their own likes in music. What you might like, he may hate. So I got to be able to play it all. So when, I, when somebody asks me to play a hip hop set, I am playing it all, and I have to be able to pitch so that the two will meet, so that when you're dancing to Queen, James Brown, Led Zeppelin, Sly and the Family Stone, you're not doing this train wreck bullshit. It's incredibly important. So this beast right here, this S11, and we, we go at it quite a bit. I don't have a life anymore. I'm up every day just learning all the wonderful things about this. The S11, the, the, the PLX 1000 is incredible. This S11, absolute, absolute, absolute game changer. Thank you. All right, so back of your shirt. Can I, can I show everyone the back of your shirt? So what I did was I came up with a mathematical quotation for the quick mix theory. Four bars forward of a song, because the average brain, when you hear a song, when you hear four bars of that music, the brain registers it. But in order to re-arrive to the top of the break, you have to spin the record counterclockwise six times back to re-arrive to the top of the break. In doing this, 
I got stuck. Four bars of music forward. Why can't I spin the record counterclockwise four bars back? And ladies and gentlemen, I was getting ready to walk away from this whole thing until I just finally just looked down on a record and it said, the RPMs is 33 and a third. So that means this record is spinning 33 and a third clockwise. But because of the third, added the additional two extra revolutions back so I can re-arrive at the top of the break and keep this music going so that when a rapper is rapping, they don't know whether it begins or it ends until I change the record. The producers called it a sample. Then the producer would put it in a computer and tell the computer to loop it and dress up the beat and then the rapper would come in after the fact. That's what the quick mix theory is. It has nothing to do with creed or color or location. It's math and science. Thank you. I'm a history nerd, and I wasn't born in the 70s, unfortunately, but I, I, I think it was one of the greatest periods of music in the world, in America in the 70s. And from the research that I've done, the people I've done interviews with, the parties they described, just, just the scenario that was going on sounds like the greatest thing ever. And I got in the time machine, I was doing some research, I was writing some questions. I wonder if you could just paint a little bit of a picture of what music, hip hop, what you were doing, the environment, you know, the Bronx was on fire, you had Uptown, you had Downtown. Can you just walk us through that feeling because that's so magical to me and I think a lot of other people have a lot of historical interest in that, please. Ladies and gentlemen, during that particular time, the hip hop culture was like a canvas. And where we would paint our musical picture was at block parties. We would go shopping for the records, practice them during the week, and I would go to the supermarket, get four or five shopping carts, take it to the nearest park. Biggest problem was we didn't have any way to plug in the equipment. I would ask the grocery store next door to the park, they like, hell no. I would ask the person who was living on the first floor, they said, hell no. And I can remember there was a lamppost on the outside of the park. And what I did was I broke open the door of the lamppost, cut the timer off it, cut off the head of the extension cord, wired it, put black tape around it, ran the extension cord into the park to power up my, my sound system. To answer Zimmy's question, this was a very joyful, joyful, joyful time. I can remember whenever we came out to do a block party, there would be police cars lined up from the beginning of the block all the way up the block, drinking soda, smoking cigarettes because they had nothing to do. The age range of people was like infants to 80 years old, like a block party was just such a, such a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time. For me, it was more like a, a canvas. Let me try this break from Bob James. Let me try this break from Sly and the Family Stone. Let me, let me try this Thin Lizzy break. Let me try this ACDC break. This gave me a chance as a kid in my house to take what I learned and try it on people. Later on, great producers like the Bomb Squad, Dr. Dre, Premier, I could go on and on and on. They would take the sample of that music and put it into a heavier beat. And this is why when hip hop became big business, it's because the samples that were inserted in the track was from some of the greatest bands of all time. This made it easy. Not really easy, 
But the person who was going to rap over the top of that had to really be qualified. And that is why the 80s hip hop, we DJs, before the night is over, we still have to play it because people still want to hear it. So to answer your question, Zimmy, it was an experimental time. We didn't have much of anything. It was just the parks and us. I didn't know what the value of this was until a number runner came up on me and said, listen, I can take this thing that you're doing in the parks and make money with it. And I looked him in the eye. He was six feet tall. His name was Ray Chandler. I said, what the hell are you talking about? He says, if you give me a chance to give out these things called flyers and we find a spot, I promise you, people will pay to see this. I gave him a month. He promoted it. The first club we had was the size of maybe th three bathrooms. We charged one dollar to get in, and it was jam packed. The rest is history. I could talk for hours, y'all. It's just so hip hop is fifty Zim, and here we are. Modern technology is absolutely incredible. People call me a legend, and I fear that. And I let me tell you why. Because a lot of times, when you invent something, legends pass away. Or they walk off into the sunset, and they never get a chance to see what they've done come into full fruition. God is wonderful. I got to see this thing. So I'm walking around, and I'm seeing these kids putting their fingers all over the record. Oh, I was getting, I was so hated in the 70s when I did that. And I'm walking around this place here and I'm seeing Qbert break down the metaphysical down to the physical medical, like he's just so dope. And I'm seeing kids doing this. And I say to myself, wow, I got to see this, man. It's a wonderful time. And here it is, 20. 23 hip hop is 50, and I'm here to see this. Yeah. This is absolutely wonderful. This whole shit could have missed. It could have missed. Because I took four years to come up with this. It could have missed, but it wasn't missed. It was like, what is he doing? Mom has that record at home. That break is not that long. So it was just that little bit of daylight. So here we are. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, the godfather of hip hop, inventor of the quick mix theory, Grandmaster Flash.